Welcome to another Coding Like Mad video. For a long time, I've wanted to see if you could pull temperature or other sensor data from video footage. So today, I'm going to show you how to do just that using some really basic techniques from image processing. Many thanks go to Cody's Lab, who produced this video footage, which compares heat capacity of beeswax and paraffin wax. In his video, he concludes that they're about the same, but I can actually see some big differences. If you haven't seen his video yet, I'm linking it below, and I really suggest you go give it a watch. His channel, if you haven't seen it before, is really pretty cool. Even with fewer explosions lately, it's still my favorite YouTube channel. Okay, let's get started. So in a previous video, I talked about how to import video data into MATLAB. If you want to take a look at that, I will put a link right here. Assuming that you know how to do that though, I'm just using the video reader object as before. So I've got a sample from Cody's video where I have temperature data, and I'm going to specify a specific start time inside the uh, video and an end time. So this is a region of interest within the video. So let's take a look at what that looks like. This is the first frame from this region of interest. And uh, Cody had a clock in the background going during the time lapse, which started at 12 o'clock. Actually, I think that's a really cool way to keep track of time here. However, you'll note that this is starting around one. And the reason is that the cameras actually move during the time lapse. I can't use the initial uh, about 50 minutes of cooling data because the camera moved and the technique that I'm using here is actually pretty sensitive to camera position. But we have a good, I would say, six hours of data, so plenty to work with. You can see there's three different temperature sensors here, thermometers. Each one is measuring a different thing. So the left sensor is measuring the paraffin wax, the middle sensor is an ambient temperature sensor, and the right one is the beeswax. So Cody was trying to figure out, do these have different heat capacities? So what we want to do is extract the raw data from these. I'm going to use the middle sensor for the video just to show you how to do this, and I'll show you data extracted all the way through at the end. I select a region of interest in the image around the central thermometer. And I'm going to pop up this figure here, which shows the first frame, the last frame uh, of the video in that region of interest, and then finally the difference between the two. Obviously the digits are different, but what I'm really trying to figure out here is, did the thermometer move? Had I done this even a few frames earlier or later, you would actually find massive differences. So I've already carefully tuned this to make sure that the thermometer is in the same position at the beginning and end of this camera sequence. So next up, I've popped up this new figure. What I've done here is I've taken the uh, essentially maximum pixel observed for each of the frames within this region of interest. And the reason I'm doing this is because if we compare this image to the last frame, for example, you see the last frame is 114. These ones actually only occupy a single segment. So these are seven segment displays, but only two of the segments are active. So if I want to know where the segments are, I need to have the video average over a large number of samples. And that's basically the idea uh, here is we need to figure out when a segment is on versus when it's off. So looking at this average, what we can do is actually select a couple of regions we're interested in. So for example, I can look at the top segment. So I'm going to select a square region around the top segment, and then I'm going to select a reference region. So what I'm doing now is for every single frame of the video, I'm taking the average intensity in the reference region and the average intensity on the segment. And by comparing these two, I can make a judgment on whether the segment is active or inactive on any given frame. So to figure out whether or not it's active or not, let's start by looking at a histogram of the mean intensity in the region of interest. So this is the average signal that we're seeing in that region. If I subtract the background reference region, this will clean up a little bit, but you can basically see there's two big clusters. There's one above about 135 intensity and one below. 
it turns out that the one below is that segment being active and the one above is that segment being inactive. If we do this for each segment in each thermometer, we can make a decision on which segments are active and then we can map that to the actual seven segment display values. I have built a function for doing this. In the link below, you will see the GitHub repository for the channel and you can download it there if you would like. So let's take a look at all of the values that we actually got for each of the three thermometers. You can see here I'm plotting the temperature that I measure versus the time code in the video file. This actually occurs over about 12 hours if you want to calibrate it. You can see that in the paraffin wax curve in particular, there's a lot of missing values, whereas the ambient thermometer was very good. This is because the quality of the display, particularly its angle relative to the camera, is much worse in the uh, paraffin wax thermometer than in the other thermometers. Uh, in order to compensate for this, any values which did not correspond to a correct digit were filtered out and any values which were significantly out of line with a smooth temperature shift were also filtered out. So in practice it's a lot easier to work with a smooth function than the sampled uh, data points. So here you can see the underlying function for the paraffin wax and the beeswax. And uh, you might wonder, is this behavior real? I mean, did I do a good job of doing this measurement? So we can compare this to Cody's data and you can see that it actually agrees extremely well with his data set. In fact, his data even captured this extra dip that you're seeing in the paraffin wax that is absent in the beeswax, but with only two data points in that region, it was pretty hard to claim that he had measured that. But with all of the data in the video, we can actually see it's very different. So let's actually try and answer the question that Cody was looking at. Are these two curves really different? That is, is beeswax and paraffin wax the same? So to answer this question, I want to show the temperature change versus time for these two materials. And you can see that the beeswax curve is quite smooth. It's peaking uh, at a certain point, but it's expected to have this type of curve because the room is becoming closer in temperature to the two samples. You can see though that the paraffin wax has a two um, peak behavior. And I don't know for sure why this is happening. I would speculate that it comes down to one of three things. Uh, the first of which is maybe there's an experimental problem here. Uh, so the two samples are about a foot apart. Maybe it's possible that the beeswax is cooling at a different rate and has a different ambient temperature. Uh, maybe there's a draft in the area. Um, I think this is the easiest way for this to occur, but I can see in the video they're a foot apart. This seems pretty weird to me. So you could fix this by adding extra insulation, uh, by doing left-right swaps, things like that. Um, the more interesting possibility is there's something chemically different going on. So beeswax is actually uh, made up of a bunch of different ester components. Um, and because of that, if there is any type of phase change going on here, and that's kind of what this looks like, um, that phase change would occur at many different adjacent temperatures and come out as a smooth curve. That same phase change, if it occurred in paraffin, would in fact occur exactly once because it's a relatively pure sample. So the paraffin might end up uh, going, for example, through a solid to solid phase change between two adjacent crystal states, whereas the beeswax would do that at a wide range of temperatures, uh, if at all. Um, I don't know if there's something chemical going on here for sure, but I do know that there was a clear difference there. So if there's some chemistry, uh, Cody successfully detected it, but we have to go frame by frame through the video to really see the effect. I'm curious uh, what you think. Do you think that there was a real chemical difference here? Do you think this was experimental error? Do you think I messed up my analysis? You should let me know in the comments below. If you like this type of video, feel free to subscribe. We have content like this coming out uh, maybe once every week or two, depending on my schedule. So uh, I hope to see you in the next video.